I first became aware of Lori's family through her mother, who was originally uh, diagnosed with breast cancer at age 59, I believe, and she elected to do breast conservation and close surveillance where she kept her breast at a lumpectomy and then went on to radiation therapy. Uh, her mother was ultimately diagnosed also with ovarian cancer, as was a sister diagnosed at age 39 with breast cancer. Uh, with that kind of family history, we became very concerned uh, with both of their uh, diagnoses and went ahead with genetic testing, and that's when we discovered the gene mutation. We describe uh, genes like they're chapters in a book. So um, we know that DNA has an alphabet, um, and certain sections of our DNA are called genes. We have 25 to 30,000 of those genes in our bodies, and so when we do genetic testing, we basically read through those genes like they're a chapter in a book. Um, we're going to look at every letter in that chapter um, to see if any words are misspelled, any letters are extra or missing, um, and if we find anything like that, we just call that a mutation. The results were positive for BRCA2. Um, Becca called me about two weeks later and gave me the results and then we set up an appointment for me to come back with my husband and to meet with her again and to meet with Dr. Lodick. Lori elected to become very proactive in her own health care. Uh, she sought counseling, uh, was tested and was found to carry the mutation. Um, I really applaud her decision to become very active and making decisions that for her are going to be life-changing. Lori had a couple of different options after receiving um, this diagnosis of a BRCA2 mutation. Um, there's just screening where we're, we're looking for cancer but not doing anything to prevent it. Um, there's what we call chemopreventive medication where she, can, she could have taken medications to help uh, lower her risk of cancer and then there's also um, prophylactic or preventative surgical options. There will be a double mastectomy, it will be removal of um, like 98% of the breast tissue. Um, I will have breast reconstruction which is um, several procedures in itself. Um, and then I am also um, having a hysterectomy and an oophorectomy, which is removal of the ovaries. We went ahead and did the uh, MRI, which proved that she had a uh, mass on the left side, and that on biopsy was found to be cancer. So now we're using that additional information to better define her surgery and make sure that we get everything taken care of in one operation. I got a phone call that day um, after I'd had that MRI that they found something on the MRI that was not there on the mammograms. And I've been having mammograms for at least 10 years, and they were always normal. Um, and so when I got the phone call about the MRI that night, I was really taken aback. I was like, are you sure you have the right patient? Because that's not what the plan was. For right now, there are a lot of women who need testing who can't proceed because they simply don't have the funding. There's um, dozens of different genetic tests that we can do for cancer conditions. The, the ones that we typically order run from between $2,000 to $4,000 out of pocket. Genetic testing is an expensive, uh, valuable tool, and unfortunately for some women it becomes a decision that they can't proceed with. I took the opportunity for Thanksgiving when I knew my family was going to be together, so I only had to tell the story once. Um, I met with them and I told them that I had had the testing done um, and that I was positive for the same mutation that my mother had um, and that it was positive and I had made the decision to have the preventive surgeries. Um, and they, they, were, they were good with that, I mean they understood my decision because as a family we had lived through losing my sister and so they, they were okay with that. What we're trying to do with this is create a fund um, to help individuals who can't get insurance coverage for their genetic testing have another option. Um, I see patients often who qualify for genetic testing according to national guidelines, but their insurance just won't cover it. Um, and it's really not an option for them to pay between two and four thousand dollars for a genetic test. Um, so we're hoping with this to be able to help individuals whose insurance coverage is, is subpar um, to really be able to have access to these tests. For those of you out in the audience, I think uh, it goes without saying that if you knew you could do a test and that you could discover a risk uh, for yourself or for one of your family members that would allow you to act preventatively, to do something to prevent a really bad disease from occurring. I think you'd 
go, go forward without question. And this is just one more way that uh, each of us can give back and allow these women and men in some cases to proceed with testing and make a difference that could save their lives. I feel that prevention is really important. Um, it puts the power back in our hands. Um, I was sort of living my life year to year thinking, whoo, I made it through another mammogram, I'll be good for another year. And so this was a way for me to be able to take control of what was happening. Most medicine is really just about you. Uh, genetic testing is, is really about your whole family. And so it's, it's important not just for the patient, but for, for everyone close to the patient as well.